Good morning. How is everyone doing? Awesome. I've got one more housekeeping uh, note for you guys that was brought to my attention. There is Wi-Fi. Uh, the network is rentals. So I'll let you guys get connected to it before I get started. Rentals, and then the password is AMA0202-20. So, Reynolds password is AMA02-20. By show of hands, how many of you are actually on Twitter? Wow, look around. Keep those hands up, look around. That's a lot of you. When I used to do these seminars back in 2009 and 2010, and I would just ask professionals who's on Facebook, maybe I'd see a few hands. So to see all these hands go up on Twitter, or for Twitter, is just fascinating. With that being said, make the most out of today, not only by absorbing this information that you are going to hear from a handful of speakers and take back to your offices, but also use this as a networking opportunity. Make sure that you're tweeting, you're engaging, okay? And you're also connecting with others in the room. So, that video we just saw was extremely humbling and it touched me and I almost kind of wish I wouldn't have seen it before coming up on stage because naturally I'm a pretty animated, high energy person, it's also 8 a.m. But at the same time, it has a lot of relevance to what I'm gonna talk about and I think what you're gonna hear from a lot of the speakers today, which marketing at the end of the day is about people, it's human. And I'm gonna share my story with you before I get into it today. I'm gonna speak with all of you about digital marketing, the state of digital and social. And there's gonna be some great context there for you. But I really want for all of you out there as professionals to know a little bit about my professional journey as to how I got here on this stage to speak to all of you. And for starters, I wanna give a big thank you to the team at AMA St. Louis. It's an honor for me to be here and speak to all of you. And it's really humbling because I've only been a resident of this community for about a year. I moved out here to St. Louis last year from Florida. I was living in Jacksonville for about eight years. And I was working in marketing there. And then I moved out here for an opportunity with Save A Lot. And this community, the marketing community, the AMA community, really opened up their arms and their doors to me. So as an outsider, if you will, coming into this community, it's just extremely gratifying and humbling to, to, to be here on the stage and speak with all of you. But a little bit about the backstory again as to how I got here. You see behind me a couple of the different places where I've worked. Back in 2008, I was working in the banking industry. I was a banker. I spent the first six years of my career working in banking. I worked with Citigroup, AIG, Regions, some pretty noble banks. And right around the end of 2008, something called the recession happened. And I found myself out of a job. I was laid off, like a lot of other people out there. And my wife was eight months pregnant at the time. She was also a banker. This is November 08. Things weren't looking good. No one was hiring in banking, at least not in the community where I lived in Jacksonville at the time, and relocation wasn't an option. So I did what a lot of professionals today do, and I turned to LinkedIn. And it was through LinkedIn, back in 2008, where I was able to build a network, and connect, and engage, and add value. And through that network, I really became inspired to start up a business. And granted, I hadn't worked in marketing before. I had no formal experience or training with starting a business. But I went all in, and I gave this a shot, 25 years old. And I leveraged social media to build a brand and to create awareness and do all the things that brands today are trying to do. I was doing this in 2009, 2010, 2011, during the recession, which was a very hard time to start up a business in this country. One of my clients at the time, Win Dixie, who I worked with specifically on helping their talent acquisition department find jobs, leveraging social media, reached out to me and said, we have an opportunity for you, potentially, if you, if you want to accept it, and that is to be the company's first ever social media manager. This is, again, end of 2011, going to 2012. Win Dixie, I'm not sure who in the room is familiar with them, over 600 stores, supermarket and grocery chain based in the southeast or in eight southeastern states. They hired me to be their first ever social media manager. Again, 
I didn't have a formal background or training in marketing other than through my own business showing proof of concept that digital and social and relationship building and being human works. So when Dixie hired me, I spent two years there. I was able to go ahead and build some new experience, build a new craft, really rebranded myself as a digital marketing professional, which is what brought me out here to St. Louis to work for Save A Lot, where over the last year I was their head of digital up until about a month ago. So with that being said, digital marketing, social media, at the end of the day, guys, it goes back to networking and adding value and connecting and engaging. So I want to put this in context because, again, on this slide here, you see some of the things I've done. But really, guys, at the end of the day, you have to use these networks. And that's what I'm going to profess over the next 45 to 60 minutes. You have to use these networks either as individuals or as brands if you really want to reap the benefits. So let's go ahead and get into this. This is how I define digital marketing. And I'll step out of the way so you can go ahead and, and read this. Digital marketing, including social media, helps drive sales through engaging content and conversation, which builds brand awareness and loyalty. Okay? It's not overcomplicated. It's very simple to understand it. Digital marketing is an extension of what your brands and your agencies have been doing for decades. It's just a different medium. At the end of the day, what your goal as marketers is, is to connect customers with solutions through these mediums. And how you do that, I'm gonna explain through my presentation, but it's very simple. It goes back to people, and you're gonna hear me talk throughout this presentation a lot about people, your marketing plans, your strategies, your objectives. It needs to center around people and the customer. How many of you in the room remember this right here? AOL, right? I grew up with it. I want to thank my mom and dad, okay, for buying me my first computer in 1996. I was 13 years old, Christmas morning. I got a computer, I got the, the, the disc, the free trial for AOL, and I was hooked, okay, hooked. I've never looked back since. I want to say that today, I am a digital marketer because of America Online. Like many of you out there in the room, you're familiar with this technology because you might have also grown up with it. And it has since evolved, right? From AOL, you had MySpace. From MySpace, you had Facebook. And today, you have things like Snapchat, you have Instagram, Pinterest, Twitter, what have you. But one thing remains constant, going back to AOL and as it's progressed for what social media is today. It's all about people. People make social media. Without people, there is no social media. Without people, all you have is brands. And if you just have brands on the medium, then what you really have is advertisers, okay? I wanna say 2015 is the year of the customer. So think about this for a second. Customers today have more access and mobility than they ever have had before. Just by a show of hands, how many of you have a smartphone? Almost every single person in this auditorium, right? More access, more mobility than ever before. I was at a conference a few weeks ago. It was a retailer trade show, and one of the speakers had a very interesting point of view, and this was in relation to Amazon and what the smartphone has done. Today, every person that has a smartphone has a shopping mall in their pocket or in their purse. Think about that for a second, okay? Every single customer out there has a shopping mall in their pocket or, or their purse. Wearable technologies. This is going to revolutionize the game, okay? Apple Watch, it's gonna come out soon. You already have smart watches. Very soon, marketers, you will be able to market to your customers on their watch. They won't even have to take out their cell phone. They won't have to go on Twitter. You'll be able to do it on their, on their watch. And to really put this in the context, in the 80s, you had to have all these different technologies to listen to music, watch movies, record what was on the radio. Going back to this right here, okay, this has changed the game of how brands go to market, but also how consumers consume content. Because again, it's all about the people that are using it. So 1980s, 
Today, this phone replaces everything that in the 80s you depended on these different mediums for. It's fascinating, isn't it? So what does it mean for marketers? Well, let me tell you something. Digital marketing is fragmented, which makes our jobs as marketers, either on the client and brand side or on the agency side, much more difficult, more difficult than it ever has before. And why is that? You have more mediums out there. You have more channels. I can tell you from actually working on the brand side and working with agencies, we all want to be on Snapchat. We all want to be on Vine. We all want to be on Pinterest. We all want to be on these emerging technologies that are out there. But we're all challenged with resources. And because we're challenged with resources, whether it be people or whether it be dollars, it makes it very difficult to go ahead and be everywhere. But I want to say this. I'll step out of the way so you can see this last point here. 2015 is not about digital marketing changing. Because digital marketing is what it is. It's a medium for us as consumers to be able to engage. It's about changing your overall strategy to be centered around the customer. So again, I'm a big proponent about marketing around the customer. I've worked in retail, in digital and social for the last three years. Without the customer, there is no brand. Without the brand, we don't have paychecks, right? So you have to think of this mindset of customer drives marketing, not the other way around. As the brand, you are coming up with strategies so the customer can take your content and they can amplify it on their Twitter, on their Facebook, so they can talk about your brand. Okay? But marketing is today is two-way. It's putting out content, but it's also engaging with consumers. It's not just putting out content and expecting them to go ahead and take that content and automatically go shop. So challenges for brands. And some of you out there might relate to this. How do you be relevant and stay ahead of the curve? And how can you be a media company but also tell a story that gets people to move? It's very challenging. And I've been there. I've been in those meetings with my agency where we want to go ahead and leverage these technologies to go ahead and do all these great things, such as drive incremental sales and more awareness. But it becomes challenging because, again, like I said before, digital marketing has become very fragmented. And this is really one of the main key points I want to drive home to you guys here today. It's all about your audience at the end of the day. So how do you determine should your brand be on Facebook? How do you determine if you should be on Instagram? Do we have any Snapchat fans here in the room? Awesome. I am too. How do you go back and convince to a marketing organization which historically has relied on things like prints, TV, radio, outdoor media, direct mail. How do you convince them to be on Snapchat? How do you convince them to be on Instagram or on these emerging platforms that are out there? Well, it's all in the people. So my philosophy is that social media is a big ocean. Okay? And the mistake that a lot of marketers make is they want to be everywhere. They want to cast this big wide net okay, over a broad audience out there. And really, it's about analyzing where are your customers? I can tell you working in grocery, the majority of customers are female, and they range anywhere from the age of 25 years old to 55 years old. So with that being said, in my grocery roles, it's been critical that we have a presence on Pinterest, which tends to skew heavy female. But with that being said, all of you out there, for the most part, represent a brand or an agency, or you know brands out there. So as you're developing these strategies in terms of channel specific, you have to keep this in mind. Social media, big ocean, but there's also many small ponds. And those are the networks themselves. And each one of these networks operates completely different. There is no one size fits all strategy in social media. Face and I'm going to break this down for you guys. Facebook is your social media content hub. Think of it as an extension of what you've already been doing. It's an extension of marketing. Twitter, one-on-one -on -one communication. Okay? The nature of Twitter is completely different than Facebook. It's more real time. It's about connecting with customers in the moment, but it's also about having two-way dialogue. Pinterest, all about offering values and solutions. 
especially on the retail side. Instagram, much younger audience. No, a lot of you out there, either you're a millennial yourself, or you want to be able to connect and engage with more millennials. Then you need to be on Instagram. So again, kind of the point I'm trying to prove is each one of these networks, not only do they work differently, but they all have different audiences that they appeal to. So as marketers, your strategy is, how do I use the resources that I have and develop strategies specifically for each one of these platforms? Because again, keep in mind, there is no one size fits all solution. Executives, let's talk about them for a second. How many of you in the room had the challenge of selling up the line marketing programs, whether it's digital or social? A few of you? Okay. I've spent a lot of time going back to when I was at Jobs Direct USA, my own company, selling the value of digital and social to senior level executives and C-levels. At Winn-Dixie, I started social media from the ground up for a multi-billion dollar brand. And at these companies, you don't just walk in because you have a title and just say, well, we need to be on Facebook just because, or we need to be on Twitter because our competitors are on there. You don't walk in and just say, we need to be on these mediums because other people are doing it. It doesn't work like that. What executives want to know always, whether it's digital, social, any sort of marketing plan, what is the ROI? At the end of the day, the end game is the same for everyone out there. It's to sell more stuff, right? That's why business is in business. They want to sell more product. So we have that out of the way. But how you get there is really the key. That's the objective. But again, going back to the ROI of why should you spend money on social media? Why should you spend money in digital? And how you explain that to a senior level executive. Here's how I define ROI. It comes back to engagement. No different than what you've been doing for the last several decades. You do print, you do direct mail, you do TV radio. There's an ROI associated with that, which is exposure, it's brand awareness. It's all part of the sales funnel to get more customers co to convert and buy from your brand. Digital is no different, it's just a different medium. So a lot of marketers kind of struggle with making that argument. If I go back to it's a medium that is scalable, you can do research, you know who you're marketing to. I love digital marketing, I'm really passionate about it because as a marketer, I know who I'm actually marketing to. I can go on Facebook, I can see analytics on the back end of who my audience is. If I am going to do a sponsored post or if I'm going to do a paid campaign, whether it's Facebook or Twitter, I can actually drill down on the customers that I want to see my content. So again, going back to the ROI, it goes back to engagement that leads to conversion. And conversion varies from brand to brand. On the retail side, it's clicks to your website. Again, that has a tangible value. There are studies that prove that customers that visit your website and engage with your brand are more loyal, and if they're more loyal, they shop more, which means they spend more with your brand. So again, conversions, clicks to website, impressions. You have downloads to things like e-coupons, loyalty program signups. E-commerce, if your brand has an e-commerce component, you can actually scale the ROI in dollars and cents. So how do you get there? I know a lot of you are thinking, I have these similar challenges, so how do I get to the end game, which is what our goal as marketers is, right? And again, it goes back to the customer. It's all about the customer and the path to purchase. So as marketers, as brands, as agencies who are working with brands, you're constantly storytelling. You're telling a brand's story about why should a customer want to shop with you. I'll be the first to say, because I've spent several years now analyzing competition. Customers have more options today more than ever before. It's a fact. And they have more resources and access, again, through their smartphones, through technology. They have more resources than ever before to go ahead and make when it comes to who they're gonna do business with. Now I'll give you an example of something that I do. I'm very much involved in Twitter. I engage often. 
And if I go to your place of business, whether it's a restaurant or retail location, I check in on Foursquare, now Swarm, and I tweet to my network of followers, and you don't tweet and engage with me back, you've lost my business. And call it a millennial mindset or sense of entitlement, but if you're gonna be on Twitter, if you're gonna be on social media, you either need to be all in or you need to not be there at all, okay? The times have changed and you can no longer make the decision, well, we're gonna be on social media, but we're only going to engage so much. We're only gonna post once a day. We're only gonna moderate and community manage for one or two hours in a day. And I can tell you for the agency folks in the room, I've worked with several agencies over the years now, I challenge you to go ahead and provide the data that you have access to to your clients out there, specifically around community management. Because creating the content is great. Creating pictorial video content, it's fabulous. It gets people engaged, it creates impressions. But the value in this technology is the two-way dialogue and engagement, which traditional marketing doesn't necessarily give you. So here's a philosophy of mine. Marketing is not about print circulars or online ads. It's about connecting customers with solutions that meet their needs. So if there's something that you walk away from this presentation today with, let it be this, guys. As marketers, it's always about the customer. It's always with taking what your brand, what the product is, and connecting it with their needs. Now, I'll give you an example. When I went to work for Save A Lot last year, at Save A Lot, there was already a great social presence established, but engagement was very low. So the agency that I worked with and I, we put our head around a content strategy. And a content strategy specifically around why should customers want to shop with a brand? And customers know what you do, right? They're your customers. In, in the case of Sable or in the case of a grocery store, they know you sell food. They know that you're the low price leader. Everyone's talking about price nowadays. So I've always been wanting to leave price out of the conversation. Our content strategy became very much around being a part of our customers' everyday lifestyle. Creating content that wasn't salesy, but was really adding value. Such as, how do you take leftovers that have been sitting in your refrigerator and actually do something with it? Tips around how do you take household items and create things with it, okay? Content that really adds value to a customer's everyday lifestyle. Again, connecting solutions and needs together. So I'm gonna give you guys an example of a brand that in my opinion is crushing it on social media and doing a great job. And that's Home Depot. So Home Depot is on Instagram. And this is a screenshot of their Instagram account from the desktop experience. They have over 85,000 followers. So how does Home Depot utilize Instagram? They have photos, right? But their photos are very much aimed to add value to the consumers that they know shop with them, which oftentimes is consumers are looking to do home improvement projects. So as you can see, there are photos of different projects. And I've got an example, one for you, that really was of interest to me is laundry room makeover. So you're on your phone, you're going through Home Depot's Instagram account, you wanna go ahead and redo your, your laundry room. Well, there's a link within the profile of their Instagram account and you click on this link and what it does is it takes you to a blog, it takes you to their website, but it takes you to a blog. And within this blog, you can actually see step-by-step -step how to's to go ahead and redesign and redo your laundry room. Within the same website, there's also the products that you buy at Home Depot. So now Home Depot is not only influencing a customer on their mobile phone, most likely, coming up with these home improvement projects, but they're also then driving the customer back to their website. Again, that's the conversion. It's part of the sales funnel. They're driving customers back to their website. Once they're on the website, now a customer is seeing everything that they need to buy, because they've already seen the steps on how to redo their laundry room. And the customer can either print this out and go in store and pick up each one of these items, or they can actually buy these items online through homedepot.com and have them delivered to their house, or they can pick it up in store, which is fabulous. 
That's all part of the omni-channel experience, folks. And that's, again, connecting as marketers, connecting your customers with solutions that meet their needs. It's important that you have a multi-channel strategy. So I touched on this before. As marketers, you cannot have a one-size-fits-all strategy, whether it's in digital or social or just across the board. You have to be collaborating. And again, this is very much aimed for the agency folks along with the brand marketers out there. You guys have to be talking with each other. You have to be collaborating on strategies, on different ideas, different ways that you can be innovative, ways that you can go into those boardroom and executive level meetings as a team with these strategies in place around how are you going to be more effective with reaching more customers, building customer loyalty, which increases sales. Because again, guys, it's all about the customer experience. The customer experience is what matters. Customers want to be engaged by you. And part of customer experience is real time. I think that's one of the big values around Twitter especially and why customers today are gravitating to Twitter. And they're almost leaving Facebook in the dust. And an example you see behind me is from the Super Bowl from earlier this month. And this was tied. After Missy Elliott shocked everyone at halftime, Tide had their Oreo dunk in the dark moment. Have all of you out there, or most of you heard about the Oreo dunk in the dark moment from many years ago? Okay. Those of you that haven't, the lights went out at the Super Bowl in New Orleans. Oreo very quickly came up with a post on Twitter. It's one of their most viral posts, one of the most viral posts ever on Twitter. Tide had their dunk in the dark moment by this post right here. We thought they said Messi Elliott. It was actually Missy Elliott they're referring to. But again, this is real time. And this goes back to what customers are looking for from your brands. They want to be engaged. They want to be entertained. People get tied. They know what Tide does. The challenge, again, is a part of that customer experience is being where they are, on the mediums where they're engaging, and at the times when they're engaging. People trust people, not logos. So let's talk about that for a second. Influencer, advocate marketing, word of mouth, different ways that you can go ahead and spin it, but comes back to people. People today are tuning out from commercials. They're flipping the channel. Or they're doing online streaming. They're tuning out from advertising. They're tuning out from Facebook because they don't want to, to see ads. They're listening to their friends. They're going on Twitter. They're even going on Facebook and their status updates they're asking their friends for recommendations. And on the flip side, you have people such as myself, they're evangelists for certain brands. I'm a big fan of Cheesecake Factory. They don't incentivize me to go there and eat with them. But every time I go and bring my family to Cheesecake Factory, I engage with them online and they engage back. And honestly, that's one of the things that keeps me going back because not only is their service and quality of food consistent, but their social media service is also consistent as well. So this stat I have behind me is from a company that I've worked with called Social Chorus. They do influencer marketing programs. I've launched two of these, one at Winn-Dixie, one at Save-A-Lot. And this stat is fascinating. 135 advocates give you more reach than 1 million Facebook fans. Let's analyze this for a second. Facebook, with their algorithm, they have changed the game. Facebook is a business. They want you to advertise with them as a brand. So your reach is very small in comparison to the audience that you have. Advocates are people that are already shopping with your brand. They're already doing business with your brand. Advocates, influencers, bloggers, whatever you want to call them, these are the folks that your brand needs to be engaging with. So when you have a new product launch, when you have a great announcement that you want to share with them, these are the folks that you're having direct dialogue with. And these folks are also influential. They have followers. They have communities. They have blogs that they have access to. Here's another important quote to walk away with today. Brands must be social versus being on social media. Brands must be social versus being on social media. And what do I mean by that? A lot of brands 
five, six years ago, rushed out to have a Twitter, rushed out to have a Facebook. The game has changed. Customers are expecting that when they write to you, regardless of what time of day it is, they're expecting a response. They're expecting a res resolution. If, you're, if this has ever happened to any of you guys, you know exactly where I'm coming from. If you are stranded in an airport because your flight is delayed and you send a tweet to any one of the carriers out there because you want to get home to your family, you want a response right away because that's important to you. Again, it's all about the customer and what's important to them. So if you're going to be on social media as a brand, even if it's just one of the channels, forget all the others that are out there. Live it. Embrace it. Be it. Don't just be on it. Here's another thing, guys. Customers don't want to be sold to. They want to be engaged. Customers do not go on Facebook. They do not check their Twitter to see the latest and greatest sponsored post from your brand. Same thing happens with email. People open up their email, they see spam or they see junk, they delete it. They do the same thing on social media. They just gloss over your content. They really don't go on these mediums to be sold to. So I'm going to give you an example of a campaign, a brand, that in my opinion sets the golden standard for what engagement should really be all about. And that's Coca-Cola. Let me ask you guys a question by a show of hands. How many of you last year either went out and purchased a bottle or a can of Coke with your name on it or purchased one for a friend? A lot of you. That is awesome. Last year for my birthday, my wife gave me this bottle of Coke. And it's probably the best birthday gift I've ever received. Honestly. And no offense to the folks at Coke, I don't drink soda, so I don't consume the product. But yet, it was a product that was personalized with my name on it. And what did I do? I shared this photo on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram with the hashtag share Coke. Conferences I go to now, everyone sees this slide. Again, guys, it goes back to engagement. What did this do for Coke? That's what everyone wants to know. Well, let me tell you something. Over the last 10 years, soda has been a declining category. Coca-Cola has seen a decline in sales for a decade. This campaign helped them lift sales by almost 3%, which when you're talking the scale and the size of Coke, that's a lot of money. So think about this again. Customers want to be engaged. They don't want to be sold to. As marketers, think about how you can be the next Coke, even if you don't have the, 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 the Coke dollars. How can you create so much enthusiasm and engagement around your brand, even if this is the one campaign that you do for this year, how can you create such a viral marketing campaign that is going to get customers not only to speak about your brand in the moment, but even after the campaign is over, they're going to still be talking about you? Because again, guys, it's all about the customer. Always has been, always will be. Marketers need to be brand storytellers and content curators. Marketers have the challenge of driving sales and brand awareness for the brand that they work for. Sales is driven by building communities of engaged and loyal consumers. So I've got five predictions for you guys. And I've talked a little bit about today's state of digital, where digital is at today, where it's been. I've shown you some examples from some different brands out there that are leveraging social and digital really well. And I also have five predictions for you guys, and some of them are more bold than others. But what's fun about prediction is a year from now, you get to look back and really see how accurate or how true these were. And the first is digital marketing jobs will be in high demand. This is a double-edged sword, though, because today there is a role at organizations called social media manager, digital marketing manager. A few years from now, those titles won't exist. It'll just be marketer, brand marketer. The challenge for those of you in this room whose title today isn't necessarily digital or social media manager or marketer is acquiring the skill set. And I've said this in my marketing roles at grocery chains. 
to other folks that don't necessarily work in the same space as I, get to understand how these mediums work. Listen to what other brands, or observe what other brands are doing and listen to other digital marketers. And really immerse yourself. Collaborate. When I was at Winn-Dixie, I was very fortunate that I had an opportunity to work with many different CPG brands, such as Coke and Pepsi and others. But that was because I had a partner within marketing who didn't necessarily work in digital, but he got it. So again, being that digital marketing jobs will be in high demand, and they are right now, and I can tell you because I'm in the process of interviewing for jobs, because those jobs are in high demand, it's up to you as marketers to really understand how this works. So that's one. Two, by year's end, Snapchat will lead the way in new user growth. I've been using Snapchat now for about six months. I love how it works. I compare it to Twitter meets YouTube, all in one. It's all about sending video, engaging, storytelling, because again, people are storytellers too. So Facebook, I think it's seen its peak. Twitter as well. Now you have people that are gravitating to new networks, which is why Instagram has taken off. Last year, Instagram led the way in new user growth. This year, I think it's going to be Snapchat. Number three, brands go back to investing in email and owned channels versus paid social media. One of the challenges I faced at Winn-Dixie, also at Save A Lot, is I didn't go to these brands and have a large budget to work with. I had to get very crafty. And at the end of the day, you don't own any of these channels. You don't own the content that's even on them as a brand or as a person who's on them. So having that right mix of own versus paid slash rented is really your challenge. I think email is going to make a big comeback. I think websites are going to make a big comeback. And then mobile apps as well, especially when you talk about wearables and the Apple Watch. Number four, Twitter will be the go-to for search over Google. And what do I mean by that? Because I know it's a, a bold prediction. Today, and again, blame it on me perhaps as being a millennial. Today, when I want news, I'm not going to Google and typing in news. I'm not going to Yahoo or any of the other news networks. I'm going on Twitter. And I'm looking in my feed to see what people are talking about. I'm seeing what's trending. And I'm also running searches directly on Twitter. And I'm being informed by either news agencies that are on Twitter or by friends of mine that are on Twitter, people I follow that are on Twitter. And number five, as advocacy grows, more CMOs and CEOs will be on Twitter. You have companies out there like a social chorus, like a dynamic signal that are creating these influencer and advocacy programs for brands. A lot of these guys now are focusing on employee, on employee advocacy because you have employees such as yourselves that work at brands that are on Twitter, you're on social media. Advocacy programs now at the employee level help tell that brand story more authentic and organically. So I think you're going to start seeing more of the C-suite that's going to get on Twitter because at the end of the day, they, are, they feel and they are very much the face of their brand. So why not have a digital face as well and a voice? So this is a closing note, guys. Today, marketing is not defined by how many people you reach, but it's defined by how many people you influence. So I want to thank everyone for coming out here today. Thank you. Here is my contact info. You've got my email, phone number, LinkedIn, my website, and I'm also on Twitter, at carlsgill83. I know we have a few minutes for questions. So let's take it away, guys. You have to have a storytelling strategy. I think it's a good medium. But if I, was a brand, if I was working at a brand today, my strategy wouldn't be to go on Snapchat as the brand. It would be to use individuals within the brand to be on Snapchat. And that's really because of the nature of it. People, again, they're gravitating to Snapchat because they want to get away from being advertised to. They want to get away from the Facebook and the Twitter. Great question. But I'd say, again, if you have a Snapchat, story, sto uh, or a Snapchat account, it's all about storytelling, but also about having a personal presence on there. IBM is crushing it. IBM is doing a great job. Salesforce is doing a great job. Oracle is doing a great job. HP, Dell. 
I know you asked for one leader. These guys, these are massive tech companies. LinkedIn is doing a fabulous job. These are all tech companies that have kind of evolved and grown with the times. And I think there's a lot that B2C companies can learn from them. Again, it's all about telling that story and adding value. Yes? That's a great question. For one, I didn't have a business plan. <laughs> I, I thought I did, and then I met with a potential investor about one month into my job, or into my career as an entrepreneur, and literally it was a, a one-pager. He ripped it up in front of me. I never looked back since. And, and honestly, you really don't know your value until you get yourself out there and, and you try charging for your services. A lot of what I did, like when Dixie became my, my biggest client and they wound up hiring me, and I literally just said to the recruiter one day, she was looking for some help with promoting a job fair on social media, and I just threw out there 250 bucks. And she bit. And I figure if I'll get one employer to pay this, maybe I'll get another pay five or pay a thousand, or if I get a thousand people to pay me 250 bucks a month, that's great. So my advice for entrepreneurs as you're getting started out there is don't have this high figure out there, charge a very reasonable amount, and even ask, what's your budget? and then work within someone's budget. Great question. Any other questions? How do you know what stories to tell? And what do you do in a circumstance where the leadership of the organization is resistant to the notion that they have stories to tell? Interesting. Well, in my opinion, every brand out there has a story. How'd they get there? What makes them great, right? People don't just buy product today just because of your logo. So there's a story there. I think it's working, collaborating with your agency, working with PR to really help define that, that story and also the talking points. And then again, to your C-suite, to your executives, it's really selling forward the vision of if we're gonna be successful in these mediums, we really have to go all in and we have to have these talking points. This is what we're covering. And I'll give you an example. When I went to Winn-Dixie, they have three key pillars, three key strategies, and that's being local, being fresh, and being affordable. So the story that we were telling on social media was one of those three pillars. Every piece of content. So when I sat across from our CMO and I saw the vision of, we're getting ready to launch Facebook, here's what we're gonna be talking about. It's reinforcing those three components. Yes? Graduating today, one key skill, um, people skills, soft skills. I know I, that's, that's tough because the classroom is teaching you by the book, whatever you're studying, but I wouldn't be standing here on the stage today if it wasn't for me leveraging LinkedIn. I signed up the day I lost my job, November 6, 2008. I had no connections. Today I have over 18,000 first degree connections, which is what has carried me to where I'm at in my career. So I'd say whether you're graduating or wherever you're at in your career today, leverage these tools that you have in front of you connect with as many people as you can, actually engage and offer value to your network. Great question. Great question. So I was at Winn-Dixie uh, about six months into, into the job, and I had no marketing budget. I was a team of one. I had no agency. And I was facing the pressure that I only had about 2,000 or so fans on Facebook, again, this is 2012, and Walmart and Publix and all these other brands were really kicking us in the teeth. So Frito-Lay came knocking. They had just come up with this concept of Lay's Do Us a Flavor, which I'm sure many of you have seen. And Lay's brought to me assets such as coupons, a Facebook gamification experience, in-store exposure, in-ad exposure, and most importantly, paid media dollars, which I didn't have. And by running this campaign with Lay's, we grew within 48 hours our Facebook page from about 2,000 likes to 25,000. In terms of it being the most successful, I'd say for the brand back then, it was most innovative yet in social, and it really helped define the strategy and the roadmap 
of CPG partnerships and working directly and collaborating with partners. It's something that I brought with me to save a lot and anywhere I work down the road, I'll, I'll still bring that same strategy. It's just collaborating with your stakeholders and your partners. Great question. All right, let's give it up for Carlos. All right, thanks guys. Thank you.